Hi, and welcome to How to Burn Water, Meatballs 101. First, we're going to start with getting everything together so that we can make these delicious meatballs. So start by preheating your oven to 375 degrees. Then you're going to need two baking sheets lined with either parchment paper or aluminum foil for easy cleanup. We're going to bake these meatballs so that we can also make our marinara sauce and get dinner on the table faster. Next, we're going to get our mise en place together. That's that Frenzy French term that just basically means get everything together. I've done the mise en place here for you. We have a half a cup of onion, finely minced, two cloves of garlic, also finely minced, a half a cup of Parmesan cheese. I like to buy parm in wedges like this one. Once I get down to the very end, like this, I throw it in a freezer bag and freeze it, and then I add the wedge of Parmesan to my next batch of soup. It's delicious in the autumn in potato soup. Next, we're gonna add two large eggs. We need two tablespoons of parsley, also minced, a half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes, and a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, which I use pretty much whenever I have ground meat. I don't wanna forget the old standbys, pepper, and salt. Next, I'm going to need a binder to help hold the meatballs together, but I don't like to use regular breadcrumbs, so I use the heel or the butt of the bread, as my niece calls it. Usually what I do is I take these pieces that no one in the family eats, I put them in, in a freezer bag, and when I need breadcrumbs, I take it out and defrost it. It takes about five minutes. I'm drowning it in about a half a cup of buttermilk. We have substitutions on the blog, including how to make your own buttermilk using milk, almond, or soy milk. I have about a quarter and a, a one and a quarter pounds of ground beef. Sometimes I'll use half ground beef and half pork. In terms of ground beef, for meatballs and burgers, I like 85-15, which is 15% fat. So we've started with our ground beef, and now we're going to add all of our ingredients. We're going to start with the salt, the pepper, the Worcestershire sauce, the garlic, the onions, the Parmesan cheese, the red pepper flakes, and the parsley. And parsley tends to be a little bit stubborn and it likes to stay behind. Get off the plate there, parsley. Next, we're going to add our eggs. And we can't forget our binder. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take our piece of bread and I'm going to mash it all up, break it into little tiny pieces and mash it all up into the buttermilk so that I can make sure it soaks up as much of the buttermilk as possible. This is a great job for kids. They love to play with their food. Okay, some of us adults like to play with our food too. Nothing wrong with that. Make sure everything's in little pieces. Everything has soaked up the buttermilk as much as possible. Smash it all together. Looks good. And now we're gonna add it to our meat mixture. In addition to the bread, we're going to add any extra buttermilk left in the plate. We want the extra buttermilk to add moisture since we're going to be baking these meatballs off. And we don't want them to dry out in the oven. So now we're just going to mash everything together. Again, this is a great job for kids. If you have more than one kid or a very productive kid, this is a great time also to do a double batch of meatballs. 
and then you can take half and put them in the freezer. If you are someone who doesn't like dealing with the raw meat, then you can use food service gloves. They're available at any grocer. Make sure you get all the seasonings off the side of the pan. Good job. And now we're going to start, or now we're going to wash our hands once we get everything put together. And now we're going to start scooping the meatballs. But first, I'm going to take a little piece, make myself a little tiny patty, and I'm going to cook that to make sure the meatballs are seasoned properly. While I'm checking for proper seasoning, I'm going to go ahead and keep scooping the meatballs out onto the baking sheets. You can absolutely make the meatballs in a pan on the stovetop if you'd like. But again, I like to do it. Once they go in the oven, I don't have to worry about them and I can work on the other parts of dinner. Looks done to me. Give it a little taste. And once all the meatballs are scooped out onto the, pla onto the baking sheet, I like to roll them, make sure they're nice round shape and that they're nicely compressed so that they'll stay together if I add them later to my marinara sauce. We don't want them falling apart, but you don't want to compress them too much because you don't want them to be heavy. You want them to be light as well as flavorful. The best part of spaghetti and meatballs, as everyone knows, are the meatballs and the garlic bread. So I like to skip the pasta because no one ever misses it. And I just serve my meatballs. And there they are. Halfway through cooking, I turn them over. Don't worry, that smudge is going to go away once the meatballs are completely cooked. But I like to eat my meatballs with some nice marinara and some garlic bread for dipping. Thank you for watching. I hope you try this recipe. Let us know how you like it.